Quechua is actually a Chanapag. Is Quechua hard to learn? The Maikulikichi is Wakapanekuna. My name is Carlos Molina Vital, and I will be talking in this presentation about the challenges that Quechua poses to people who want to study that, coming particularly from English, but this also applies to other Indo European languages like European languages like Spanish, French, Italian, German, and so on. Regarding the question, is Quechua hard to learn? It all depends on your perspective, where you're coming from. If your language is very different from Quechua, then there are going to be certainly difficulties for you to learn this language because the overall incompatibility of this structure between languages. However, some of those differences may be in your advantage. For instance, Quechua can be easier to learn than other languages if we start thinking, if we begin by saying that Quechua doesn't have irregular verbs. And in general, Quechua has very little irregularity. Off the top of my head, I can barely think about 10 things in Quechua that are irregular. One of them, maybe the hardest one, is when you have to learn how to say, I do something to you, you do something to me, I do something to you guys, you guys did something to him, etc. So those can be difficult and you would need to learn them by memorization and a lot of practice. But compared to what you have to learn in Spanish or French, that's nothing. For those languages, you have to learn long lists of verbal paradigms, the conjugation list. And once you've learned those, which are quite a few, then you realize that there are also irregular forms and you have to learn them by heart. So nothing like that happens in Quechua. Quechua is extremely regular and has very, very, very little exceptions or very few exceptions. There are only three vowels in Quechua. Let's talk about the pronunciation. So coming from a language like Spanish, well, Spanish has five vowels, uh, or English that has 14 to 16 vowels, depending on your dialect of English or variety of English, or French with 14 vowels, or Portuguese with at least 10, then Quechua is very much a straightforward affair. Having three vowels is not unusual for world languages. Quechua is like Inuit, a language spoken in the Arctic region in Canada and the United States, or Arabic. Classical Arabic also has only three vowels. So I, I think, you know, also Hawaiian uh, may have three vowels, but I'm not sure. But in any case, Quechua is not alone. It is not difficult to understand why a language can have a short, a, a little amount of vowels compared to other ones. And these vowels are e, a, u, and you can tell that the pronunciation is a little bit in the middle of the mouth, like in the, the middle height. And here we have three words that are contrastive, whose meaning can be differentiated only because of the presence of a vowel. Tiki, ground corn, taki, song, tuki, vice. So those are the vowels that you're gonna have to master. And you can have, uh, there is room for, you know, for playing around, for, talk, for using different types of pronunciation for the same overall quality of the vowel. Regarding the consonants, you are only, you're going to find that most of the Quechua consonants are already included in the Spanish repertoire and also in the English one. The only vowels, the, sorry, the only consonants that are particularly different and new to many speakers are pa, a uvular stop, a uvular consonant written with Q, and the double L, L, which is pronounced like a LIA, as in LIAMA. So those are going to be a little difficult to, to learn because they are unusual, and with a little practice, you will be just fine. To those two, we have to add perhaps ñ, but for those who come from, from Spanish or those who have experience with Spanish, ñ, as in caña, or in a catch a word like ñaña, the sister of a woman, that's perfectly acceptable as a new sound to learn. However, if you are going to focus on the Cusco variety and the Bolivian variety, then you have an extra level of difficulty with the apostrophe that indicates the ejective consonant, as in copa, garbage, trash, and the aspirated consonant, as for instance in kali, kali, which means healthy. Fortunately, you don't need to learn those in pronunciation, 
but but you're you're still gonna have to learn how to write with them in order to keep the southern variety of Quechua unified. That means that if you don't use if you don't say Opa, but you say Hopa, and if you say Kali, but you say Kali, that means that you are speaking with a different accent, but everybody is going to understand you. So you are not running the risk of being misunderstood, which is the, the most important part about communicating with a language. So uh, then we have that there is a clear division between morphemes. That means that compositionality, how you put together words in Quechua, is very regular and is very logical, and you can learn the rules very easily at that point. You can keep adding up rules depending on how many suffixes you want to add. So a word like Rexina uh, Kusunchis Ya, which means let us meet meet other, um, let us meet each other a little sure, can be divided fairly straightforwardly in Rexi, the stem, the base, to meet, to know, to, to be acquainted with, Ri, which makes the action shorter in time or less uh, important, let's put it like that, uh, naku, which means to each other, sunchis, which means let us, like we in the future, or it's an, uh, a command also, let us do something, and ya, which means, of course, I agree with you. So, uh, rexi naku sunchis uh, ya, it's a suitable answer for somebody asking or telling you, oh, let's introduce each other, let's meet. So you say, okay, let's meet. That's pretty much what they're doing there. A good deal, therefore, a good deal of the learning that you're going to be doing depends for the basic level and to be able to have a basic command of Quechua depends on how many suffixes you're able to recognize and to organize following certain distribution rules. Usually 60, suffix, 60 suffixes is a safe bet for what somebody who is knowledgeable in Quechua is able to recognize and to use. So you can concentrate on learning those and you will get a basic level of Quechua. Of course, there is more to learn. There is interaction to be learned. There, is, there are intonation patterns to be learned, but those are more advanced issues. At this point, that is pretty much a basic stuff to learn. The suffixes and their distribution and their use or meaning. Having said that, there are some difficulties to learn in Quechua because of the differences that, it, the differences that type this language has compared to other Indo-European languages or European languages in general. So one of the main difficulties is that agglutination, which is a technical term for putting together the suffixes, that can, can get heavy. So, but this is one of those words that is unusual to find, but not, nevertheless, you can run into this. Somebody saying, Tarpurpari parkoi sichis kaikipuni. I'm going to say it again. Tarpurpari, <laughs> you see, it's not that, it's not that easy. Tarpurpari parkoi sichis kaikipuni. That means... Certainly, I will make them help you plant again, make you replant. I won't go into the analysis of all of these suffixes, but this is just for you to see that agglutination, adding up suffixes, can get heavy. One of the advantages is that Quechua doesn't have prefixes. So there is nothing that goes in front of this stem. Everything goes after this stem, which is an advantage. Also, the words in Quechua can average between four to five to six syllable longs, long, which is the normal length for a word in Quechua, compared to English, which has mainly monosyllabic, one-syllable words, two-syllable, one, two-syllable, and words that have three or four are more uh, unusual in English. This can be a big challenge, and I can tell that you are going to struggle at the beginning trying to put all the sounds together. Another difficulty is that constructions, of course, the way you put together sentences is sometimes very different from what English or even Spanish, for that matter, does. So how do you say something like, um, like this? I spoke with the person that Juan knows, that, um, a simple subordinate, subordinate clause. I spoke with the person and then you have a relative clause, the person that Juan knows. To say that in Quechua, you say something like Juanpa Juan Paruna Rexis Hangwan Erimarcani. Erimarcani, which means I spoke to. Let's mark that so that we can see it a little bit better. So this part here is I talked. I talked, I spoke. This is with, but who I talk with? Well, I spoke with the person that Juan knows. 
So this Rexiskan means the known, the, the one known. And then you have the person known and Juanpa, John's, Juan's, Juan's, pers Juan's known person. With Juan's known person, I spoke. As you can see, that sounds fairly different from what English or Spanish, yo hablé con la persona que Juan conoce, Quechua does a very, uses a very different strategy to put together complex sentences. But the distribution of the suffixes, as I mentioned before, is very precise and you can get away without using all the suffixes. And there are more than 60, to be honest. Well, uh, I think that has been all about the difficulties that Quechua poses to people learning it. I hope that this has clarified some of the characteristics of the language compared to English in particular, but also to Spanish and other European languages in general. So good luck learning Quechua. Tu panachis kamayat.